Okay, in the next example, we're going to be rolling dice again. And this time, the dice are going to be rolled behind a curtain. And somebody behind the curtain looks at the outcome and tells us that the result is even. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, or 12. So if we know that the result is even then, now we want to find the probability that the result is 10. The total on the two dice is 10. Okay, so this is another example of a conditional probability. Probability we're interested in is if the outcome is a 10, the total on the two dice, and the conditioning event is the uh, fact that we know the result is even. Okay, so we'll let E be result is even, and T be the result is 10. And so what we want is probability of uh, T given E. And so we need the probability of the intersection. These outcomes are equally likely, so we can use the account of these sets. The number in the intersection, well, what does intersection mean? It means it's both even and it's a 10. Well, there's no way that we could have a 10 that is not even, and so the number of even 10s is the same as the number of 10s, which is 3. On the other hand, the number of even rolls is 18. Okay, half of the rolls are even and half are odd. And so applying the formula then, probability of t given e is the ratio of these two, 3 out of 18, or 1 out of 6. Uh, it's important to realize, by the way, that um, the probability, the conditional probability of t given e is not the same as the conditional probability of e given t. And in general, this is these two uh, conditional probabilities will not be the same. Uh, occasionally they are, but not in general. What would that first one mean? Um, t given e, well that's the probability of a 10 if we know that it's even. We just work that out to be 1 sixth. Uh, what about the second one? Probability of E given T. The probability that the roll is even given that it's a 10, well that's 100% of course. Because if you have a 10 then it's automatically even. Okay, in my next example we have a chart which gives the result of a survey. And in this survey, we see the starting salaries, or the range of starting salaries that were offered to uh, various college graduates by major. And so let's take a look at that chart. Okay, so 30,000 and below. 30,000 to 35,000 and on up to above 45,000. And we have totals given in percents. So the grand total is going to be 100, of course. And over here on the left, we see the majors that the students majored in. Liberal arts, science, social science, health field, technology. Okay, so our experiment then is going to consist of choosing one graduate at random um, in the category 40 to 45,000. And we want to find the probability that the student was in a health field. Okay, so this is the, this is a conditional probability. We want the conditional probability 
that the student is in a health field. So let's say uh, let H be student in health field. And we'll let T be student salary in the range forty to forty five thousand. Okay, we know that the student is in that range. And so what we want is the probability of H given T. Now we know that it's going to be the probability of the intersection, H intersect T, divided by the probability of T. And in this case, uh, these probabilities are easy to read right off the chart. Okay, so we know we're in this column here, the 40 to 45,000 column. And let's see, where is Health Field? Health Field is in this row. Okay, so there it is. There's the intersection of those two. Those are students who are in a health field and we're offered a salary in that range. So P H intersect T is 3% and then we want the probability of T, that's the uh, total number of students in that health, in that uh, salary range and that's this number right here, 15%. So, probability of T, 15%. And so our conditional probability then is 3% divided by 15%. The answer is one-fifth.